What's going on, family? It's your girl, Eve. Um, need to talk to you today about a topic that I think we talk about a lot, right? As black people, but it just keeps rearing its ugly head. So today we're going to talk about colorism. Now, um, wanted to talk about it in the context of um, this announcement of, you know, the Zoe and Blythe collection. Um, I got the dolls in and, you know, started going ahead and putting them out to the public with their personalities and everything. And they're being very well received. Um, but I got some feedback that really made me pause for a second. And so I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about colorism within this context. Now, let me apologize in advance um, for the crappy video quality. I literally shot this whole video on my camera, went to upload it, put it in my little software, spent like two hours editing the video family only for the video to not save and for the video editing software to crash. So I'm like, you know what, I don't even have time. Like I was doing it on my laptop, so I'm like, I don't even have time. I'm just gonna reshoot the whole thing on my iPad. And I'm sorry if it's a little bit grainy. I'm sorry if the audio isn't pleasant. We are gonna get through this together, okay? We are gonna get through this together. So, named each doll for, not each of them, but the majority of them, for a woman that I felt, um, you know, should be honored within my circle of trust. So, this is the doll that I announced yesterday, one of them. You see her. Boom. Okay. Her name is Annika. And she is named after um, the creator of Her Story Raps, Annika Marie. And I wanted to definitely honor um, Annika Marie by making this doll in her likeness so that other little girls could play with a doll that looks like them, is beautiful, but also connects them to a real woman in their community that is making strides um, to improve the community, as well as just mentors and um, powerful women in general. So. That's Annika. Now, over here, this is Jules. Um, Jules is patterned after the um, deaf model Jules Johnstone. Um, and you can find her on Insta, and I'll post her info as well. Um, but I really love the fact that uh, even as a member of the deaf community, um, Jules still wanted to continue her career uh, to become a model. So I thought she would be uh, a great uh, personality to pattern this doll after. Um, she is also mixed race. So I believe she's black, Scottish, and uh, Latina. And so very interesting eclectic mix, um, but she is very fair skinned and she has red hair. And so that is Jules here. One of the things that I wanted to address is the idea of what it means to be black <laughs> in terms of colorism. Now, the reason why I made this collection is because, as we all know, um, it's very difficult for um, young girls to see themselves in a lot of the dolls that are in the mainstream right now. You can find um, some sprinklings of, you know, brownness in the doll selection. But what I did find as I was doing my kind of market research is that the majority of the dolls are a black wash, black wash, of a white doll. Um, it's just a black version of that white doll. Um, the dolls don't have their own personality, um, so to speak. All said and done. Fine. So here we are with the Zoe and Blythe collection and it has been my goal in curating this collection to give a broad range of looks, personalities, as well as subcultures um, for the personalities of the dolls that um, will be put into the collection. So hence you have 
uh, dolls that are fair and with curly hair, dolls that are mixed. Um, I have brown dolls. I have brown dolls with straight hair because let's be clear, it's like not everybody is a curly girl. Like it's curly girl culture is beautiful and amazing, but not everybody's a curly girl. And girls who um, rock a relaxer, it's nothing wrong with that either. Um, so they definitely are represented in the collection. So one such doll um, is my Imani doll. She's a dark skinned doll. She looks like this. And um, she has long hair. She got them bundles, girl. Um, but she's a beautiful doll and she doesn't have curly hair and that's just that. So getting back to the colorism. When I announced Annika, she was met with um, a lot of positivity and so I'm very grateful for that. However, there was one comment in particular that stuck out to me and really, you know, gave me pause and really, um, if I can be honest, kind of infuriated me a little bit. And it was all in one comment, but I feel deep, so it just is what it is. But basically, and I'll show you here, um, what she said is, hey, I really like that doll in the back. Um, you should wrap all the dolls. <laughs> Number one. This is what she said on, on, a, on another post on a group. Because I had posted it and shared it in several groups. But on, the, on the group post, she said, you should wrap all the dolls and you need to bring that brown doll, you know, the doll in the back to the forefront. She then went to the actual post on my actual page and repeated it and said, you know, I really like that brown doll in the back and you should wrap her and bring her to the forefront. So first of all, I'm like, er, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is an announcement for the Annika doll. Why would I bring the Imani doll to the forefront? So for me, it really had kind of a negative stigma and a negative connotation to it as as to almost say like why do you have this lighter skinned doll <laughs> wrapped and in the forefront like you need to bring that brownie girl doll to the front and wrap her almost as to say and this is how I interpreted it this doll isn't brown enough to be the doll with the head wrap um, which I find really, really problematic because let's be clear, let's be clear. Light skinned girls are black too. Have just as much um, right to rock a head wrap or anything else as anyone else does. Furthermore, um, the young woman who she is patterned after is fair. <laughs> She's a fair, you know, she's she's light brown skin and she is, you know, the the progenitor of this whole rap movement um for the city of Phoenix. So I just find it I find it very offensive um for people to say things like that or to even allude to or insinuate that that having a lighter skinned person you know wrapped or in afrocentric gear or in you know, in the forefront of any type of brown people's movement is problematic. I find you problematic when you do things like that. Um, so in creating this collection, I want to make it uh, very clear that the Zoe Girls Tribe is for the diaspora. And within that diaspora, we go from extremely light. Um, I actually have a doll coming in. It should be here in about a week um, that I will be creating as an albino doll okay she will be completely fair with blonde blonde hair not yellow blonde hair like white blonde hair um because we come like that and all the way down to the darkest of the dark um there are dark skin uh dolls that i have that have curly hair and dark skin uh dolls that i have with straight hair um and i think it's really important to highlight along the way, you know, kind of the gambit, even between Jules and, come here Jules B, even between Jules and Annika, you'll notice that fair is not fair. You know, there's different levels. So they're not the same, you know, color of fairness. Because it's important that all of the girls get to see themselves um, in that gradient. 
So I'd love to hear your comments about this. I would love to, you know, see what you think about it. I know definitely that she probably didn't mean anything malicious by it. I know that in the curly hair movement, um, as well as in the natural community, as well as in, you know, on TV, et cetera, you know, finding the darker skin models, et cetera, um, is problematic, right? We have an issue with that still. However, um, I think there is a reversal of sorts that takes place also, which attempts to exclude um, the fairer skinned um, black people from the black movement, from the black conversation. And I'm not for it. <laughs> not for it so um i want to hear your comments so uh thank you for checking out this video for sure number one if you want to uh hear more about the zoe girls and their different personalities and you know who they're patterned after and what they're like etc then i definitely encourage you to check out the zoe girls blog um you can find it at zoeandblythe.me forward slash blog you can definitely also join our facebook group which is the Zoe Girls Tribe, sent me a request and I will definitely add you in there. Uh, also find us on Instagram at Zoe Girls Tribe. And if you want to buy the dolls, which that is the Purpose Family, buy the dolls, um, then you can find the dolls at zoeandblythe.me. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, and check me out on the next video. Say bye, ladies. <laughs> bye.